Greetings, friends, family, and survivors. Well, I had three hours today, so we came up and did a little cabling and got the lithium online and things rerouted at least temporarily. And we're out of debt. I sold a pickup truck that we rarely ever drive. It would sit for well, we use it twice a year. We, we had the truck for hauling logs in the tractor, and we decided to build a, a log hauling truck that could load itself where you don't even have to take the tractor. And man, that's going to save a lot of fuel. Sometimes getting logs round trip, it's 60 bucks a round trip. And uh, we put in six trips in a day, and it adds up fast. So uh, we sold the truck. It was costing $35, $40 a month sitting there, and we only drove it twice last year. So that we don't really need it. We talked a long time about uh, selling it, and then we lost a, a battery, and we were down to four of the L16s, which these four are running great, but didn't want to go into winter like that. So we're load testing and learning how to charge these guys. Uh, I know I didn't sweep the floor yet. I've got to head back to the church here in, a, in an hour. So I think, I think we did okay for the three hours we had. So Bobby, Bobby Solar Homestead, thank you so much, brother. He's, he's told me how he runs his. He's got Chevy Volt on a TriStar Chevy Volt batteries which are 6S in his configuration, and I'm 7S, but I'm going to use the same principle of charging. And I'm experimenting with this and this guy, and uh, these two are set up the same. And so today we took the charge up to 4 volts per cell. So 28 volts. And... Uh, Nothing heated up. The batteries are the same as the room temperature. They just never got warm at all. I was pushing uh, only 80 amps into them. And that was the two solar arrays. And when we bring the laptop up here and reconfigure this one, we're going to be pushing 120, 130 amps into the batteries. And still nothing was heating up. Um, the cooling system works fine, but I can see clearly there's no way to cool those batteries if the radiator's in this room, because all it can do is pull this room's air temperature through this. Um, so I could say I, I hooked it up for a proof of concept, tested it, the control set points, all that works, but now I have to put a place where the radiator's actually able to pull cold air through that fan, through the little radiator. And obviously, I'm not going to cool batteries off when this room is 110. So the plan is to take that radiator. We're going to put add one more fan to it. I'm going to put it in the floor right there, and it's going to blow warm air straight down. It'll pull cold air in through these vent holes. And this room's insulated, including the floor. Um, just plug those holes off, turn the fan up, that, disable that part of it, the cooling system in the winter time. But in the summer, it can blow any warm air that the batteries do generate, and they didn't get any at all today, but it's possible. But um, that'll keep them cool. Uh, this room typically stays about 75. If it's 100 outside, it'll be 75 in here unless the door is left open all day. So it won't have any problem at all getting enough cool air to run that little radiator. In the winter time, um, this gets a little bypass between these two lines. Two valves. Open one valve, close the other valve, and put a little uh, aquarium heater in this tank. And when you open one valve and close the other valve, it'll bypass the radiator loop and it will circulate heated coolant from that heating element. It will circulate that through the batteries and that's what that upper port is for right there. 
and so you can adjust up to a 25 degree bandwidth with that but I won't run it that way I'll just run it where I'm potential of heating if it needs it in the winter and a potential of cooling if it needs cooling in the summer and manually change the valves I'm not gonna mess with automating it um, I'm not doing this because I like playing with it I'm doing it because we need it at any rate that's the stuff that we had it looks like uh, selling that pickup truck got us completely out of hock so I may buy one more battery which would give us uh, 12 kilowatts and probably 9 kilowatts usable and so it'd be another seven hundred and sixty dollars but we've got the racking for it uh, it's it's gonna be easy easy to do so I'll see how this goes going into the winter and if it looks like you know gosh I wish I had a little bit more capacity we'll throw one more battery in there and, and see how that goes and I've got this set up uh, also where I can charge the lithium with um, with the diesel so it's cut out is at 21.5 volts these batteries can technically go down to 20 this inverter will turn off at 21.5 and the amp hours I changed type will go to custom I've got my absorb uh, voltage set at 28.4 on this guy because uh, if I was charging with the diesel I probably would go ahead and take them to their max um, which 29 point something would actually be their max voltage and then it's float voltage of course will never get used when it gets full I'm going to turn the generator off so that won't matter equalized voltage is the same as, as absorb and so that'll work I just throw some current in the batteries with the diesel for an, an hour or so every now and then and I think we're gonna be in good shape and now I gotta go have a blessed day folks we sure are